Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to beautiful Moscow to everyone who is watching me from Russia. Ja очень rada. Ja jest dies. Hello, привет. So for the next few weeks guys, we will have videos from here and I will have a new challenge. Record the video and put the gloves on because as you can tell it's a winter time in Moscow so let's jump into the topics that I have for you today what do I have for you well first and foremost uh, there is more story about Polish farmers and how they are calling them names from the Ukrainian side I'm gonna read you this just awful second is very interesting article about Ukrainians by the way before I continue those of you who are watching my videos for more than a year you're already familiar with those cleaning trucks cleaning cars since we have snow here lots of snow actually so uh, going back to the second topic will Ukrainians be able to vote in Poland boy oh boy that's gonna change a lot then I have uh, interesting statements about Trump and NATO and what might change in that subject and of course we will end this video with comments of the day if I am stumbling over my words today please forgive me because I slept literally two and a half hours I arrived really early morning 2 a.m. so it's quite understandable if I'm all over the place, which usually is my style anyway. So let me start with this article about statements that one of the Ukrainian economists just made about Polish farmers, everyone. This is something else I'm telling you. So Ukrainian economist challenges Polish farmers and he says suckers and lazy losers can you believe this yeah i know you can i know unfortunately we get used to those words from them andri yarmak is his name who is a former economist at the food and agriculture organization of the united nations from all the places uh, and now an employee of the east fruit market platform called the protesting farmers in Poland suckers, lazy losers and narrow-minded people. How dare you, right? I am so grateful, quoting this person, to the Poles who came up to me at the Fruit Logistica and apologized for the actions of their marginalized suckers on the border with Ukraine. They have zero filter for real, right? I am so grateful to Poland for all the help it is providing to Ukraine and Ukrainians during this difficult time, he continues. I lived in Poland when it uh, joined the European Union and I remember farmers in Germany and France protesting against Polish products. I feel sorry for those Polish farmers who are so easily manipulated by the Russians. <laughs> Yay, the same, the same, the same story, no? Yes, definitely those farmers are manipulated by the Russians like they have time for this. From the experience of living in Poland, he continues, I know that those who take part in such an actions are usually lazy losers who cannot cope with working in agriculture. Unbelievable. He goes on, real farmers cultivate the land and think which makes them successful. Well, definitely being overloaded with product with Ukraine will not make them successful. Common sense here. This was my thoughts, of course. Just wow, right? Wow, just wow. What else can I say? Like, do Polish farmers even care what this whatever person has to say? Now, can Ukrainians vote in Poland? Will they be able soon to get the right to vote. 
The case raises controversy, says, says this article. Here are some interesting, uh, sorry guys, here are some interesting points if they will be able to vote. The issue of vo voting rights for Ukrainians residing in Poland is coming back. The association of Ukrainians in Poland is to demand such a privilege. Can you believe it? Yes, they use this word, demand. On the other hand, the opinion of Poles are divided, thank God, both in the public space and on internet. Yeah, thank God was from me, you know, you know by now. The issue of voting uh, rights for Ukrainians in Poland has become has become famous again thanks to information provided by Rzeczpospolita website portal Soros Money, you know that one I always mention, Soros Money. The portal reported that the Association of Ukrainians in Poland wants Ukrainians, the refugees of course, to receive voting rights at least at the level of local government. My goodness, that's gonna change the whole country. Big time. However, this is important, be important because local elections in Poland will take place soon as they are scheduled for April 7th this year, 2024. Apologies for my hand, but it's really cold, so I have to switch. Making such a decision, for example, introducing voting rights for foreigners without Polish citizenship, yes, would require an amendment to the electoral code. How they can vote in the country without being the citizens in the country? Currently, they are available to citizens of the European Union and the UK. That's crazy, no? Such a person may be elected to municipal councils, commune heads, mayors and presidents of cities. European Union law does not prohibit the extension of the rules to non-European Union citizens and they have already been introduced in many European countries. What a mess. <laughs> However, if this happens, the new regulations will not be in force in the next local government elections in April due to the end of the period for submitting candidates. Thank Jesus. And I mean it. Thank God. But I think they are heading this way. They want to do this. They want Ukrainians to be able to vote in Poland. All right, let's go to Donald Trump and NATO because there is more to the story. His advisor has announced the creation of a multi-level alliance with NATO. Some countries will be left without protection. Keith Kellogg, if I pronounce his name, or Kellogg, I think Kellogg, Donald Trump, top national security advisor, said on Tuesday, that's yesterday, we have Wednesday today. By the way, happy Valentine's Day, guys. Not like I care for the commercial holiday, but this is all about love, right? Happy Valentine's Day. So he said it on Tuesday yesterday that he would insist on turning NATO into a multi-level alliance if Trump becomes United States president again. As Reuters points out, this idea is aimed at depriving some member states of protection against attack. Oh, that attack. He also stressed that some members would enjoy greater protection, meaning more money, chin chin, based on, I don't know this word, adherence to NATO's funding articles. Now, in case of non-compliance with article number three, NATO protection provided uh, under article five should not be treated as automatic. So, what does the Article 3 talk about? Article 3 states that NATO member states must make appropriate efforts to develop their individual defense capabilities, although it does not stipulate that countries must spend at least 2% of their GDP for defense. NATO countries committed in 2014 to achieve this amount within the next 10 years. Well, this means that Poland is very, 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 very safe. 
because we spend over 4% of our GDP and they are very safe and protected from the attacker, from the attack that never will happen, from the anonymous attacker, you know who? They are very, very safe. I mean, if there is no attack and they are safe, what happens to the money? God knows, right? Okay, guys, let's go to comments of the day. From my latest video, I have very cool comments, actually. Uh, about farmers, but I want to start with comment from Zorro, who is my subscriber for quite some time. I love your name, by the way, Zorro. Zorro9823. So this is great comment, lengthy, but worth giving your attention to. So bear with me and Zorro. Imagine, this is about Ukrainians, okay? Imagine you are having a stroll in a park and suddenly see a mother slapping her kid. Imagine the kid cries for help and you forcefully take him from his mother despite she warns you. You have no idea what's going on. Imagine after a week you realize that the kid is literally obsessed with demons, talks in two tongues, totally schizophrenic, extremely aggressive, has stolen of your, all of your money and killed your cat in the most cruel possible way. I'm trying not to laugh because it's not funny, but it's just such a brilliant comment. Okay, cruel way possible. Turns out the mother was walking the demon-obsessed child to her priest when you interfered. The kid is Ukraine, mother is Russia. Zoro, thank you so much for your comment. I absolutely love it. It's actually very deep, very thoughtful, and I agree with you 100%. The next comment I have is from Disabled Army Veteran. By the way, all the respect to the veterans I know, especially in the United States, since I live there. And Scott Ritter talks about it a lot, how they are abandoned and not appreciated after they serve the country. So. The comment from Disabled Army Veteran. If you are disabled, I wish you well. I wish you health and energy. Quote here from you, the comment. Support the farmers. And then it's a heart. I have found out that farmers are down to earth people. And when farmers protest, people should pay attention. Humans can survive without politicians. I agree with you completely. And the last comment is from... Oh, I forgot. I'm so sorry. I have to mention to I forgot the name from who, but it's a great comment. So let me read you this. In 2009, between 2009 and 2011, investors took control of Ukrainian grain production and have since dumped massive amounts of, oh, this word, glipo, gliposates cancer-causing chemicals found in products like Round, Roundup in the process of in, uh, instituting industrial-style farming in Ukraine. That product, hard to pronounce, glypho, gliposates, have been banned in Europe and in the United States and in the state of California. Numerous class actions lawsuits have been brought against Monsanto and other... Uh, and other factories that were using this product and are responsible for the decline of the bee and butterfly population. So this is in regards to how bad are those products that are coming from Ukraine. So guys, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, for the next few days, not today, probably next few days, I will be trying to create news and views for you combining videos from the places i will be visiting that will be some parks you know museums uh, all different places today the video will be in this format but if you would like to see how the city is decorated maybe i will do it at night and i will try to attach tomorrow how they decorate the city go on my instagram as well you will have more clips from there and with all of this being said to take off my gloves now make sure
to join me on Locals, follow me on Instagram, join my mailing list. You can find me on Rumble as well. If you would like to support my work, you can do it by buying me a coffee. Thank you so much. Or becoming a supporter on Locals as well. Lots of love. Happy Valentine's. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. If the video brings you any value, please subscribe. Let's get to this 100k while I'm still here. Hit that like and leave the comments that I will choose from them for tomorrow's video. Bye everyone.